Hello and welcome to the third video in the A-Level Biology series. Today we are going to be following on from transport in plants to discuss transport in mammals. Mammals have an important system in transporting blood and dissolved substances around the body, known as the circulatory system. The mammalian circulatory system is described as a closed double circulation which consists of the heart, blood and blood vessels. Double circulation refers to the two circuits of blood flow to the heart. One takes blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart and the other takes blood from the heart to the rest of the body to supply tissues and cells. At the heart of the mammalian circulatory system is the heart. The function of the heart is to coordinate the transport of blood to the lungs for oxygen and around the body to provide oxygen to tissues. The heart is a myogenic muscle, which means it does not require an external stimulus to contract and relax. The heart is organised into four chambers called the atria and ventricles and divided into two sides. The atria and ventricle must contract and relax in a coordinated rhythm to keep blood flowing around the body. Oxygenated blood is brought back from the lungs into the left side of the heart through the pulmonary vein. While blood is now deoxygenated from the rest of the body, returns to the right side of the heart through the vena cava. The left side of the heart has a much thicker wall than the right side because the blood has to be pumped a much further distance around the body than to the lungs. The top chambers of the heart are the atria. These receive the blood supply through veins, vena cava on the right and pulmonary vein on the left. Blood then passes through the atria into the ventricles through the atrioventricular valves. These valves prevent the backflow of blood into the atria. The ventricles then pass blood through the arteries for transport, passing through the semilunar valves which again prevent the backflow of blood into the ventricles. The heart muscle receives its own supply of blood through the coronary arteries. Blockage of these arteries can lead to a heart attack. So important to remember, arteries take blood away from the heart and veins bring blood towards the heart. Let's talk a bit more about the main components of the circulatory system in mammals. Blood. This is an important circulatory fluid which consists of red and white blood cells, suspended in plasma, important for supplying tissues of oxygen and hormones and removing waste molecules. Lymph is also a circulatory fluid and it flows through the lymphatic system, which consists of lymph nodes and lymph vessels. The function of lymph is to remove interstitial fluid from tissues, absorption and transportation of fats from the digestive system and transporting white blood cell and antigen presenting cells to lymph nodes for immunity. The similarities between blood and lymph are that they are both circulatory fluids, they circulate within vessels, they have a role in immune function and are joined by a system of capillaries. The main differences are that blood is red and lymph is colourless. The lymph resides in the lymphatic system and blood in the circulatory system. Lymph plays a role in immunity. Blood is involved in the transport of oxygen, carbon dioxide and waste hormone circulation. Lymph contains plasma, no red blood cells and fewer white blood cells and platelets, whereas blood contains plasma, platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells. Lymph carries a relatively low amount of oxygen compared to blood, which carries a large amount of oxygen. Lymph also lacks proteins, whereas plasma has proteins, calcium ions and phosphorus. Lymph fluid flows slowly compared to blood, which flows fast. Lymph also clots slower than blood because there is less fibrinogen and lymph only moves in one direction and blood moves in a circular motion. The three types of blood vessel are arteries, veins and capillaries. As mentioned before, arteries carry blood away from the heart to various organs and tissues of the body. 
Arteries have a thick muscular wall containing elastic tissue and an inner layer of epithelial cells, which are folded to allow the expansion of the artery with pulses. This is known as elastic recoil. This structure allows arteries to withstand the pressure change and the high pressure of blood forced through them by the heart. The lumen of the artery is smaller than the lumen of the vein to ensure high pressure is maintained throughout the vessels. Veins carry blood towards the heart from the lungs and the body organs. The blood within the veins is at a much lower pressure than in the arteries. Therefore, the lumen is wider and the outer muscular wall of the vessels has less elastic tissue. There are small valves within the veins to prevent the backflow of blood due to the lower pressure. The contraction of muscles in the body also help the blood move through the veins and back to the heart. Capillaries are tiny and numerous networks of vessels which connect arteries to veins at points where substances are exchanged between blood and tissues, such as oxygen, glucose, carbon dioxide and water. The capillary endothelial wall is only one cell thick and there are small pores in the walls to allow the exchange of substances with reduced diffusion distance for efficient exchange. The cardiac cycle refers to the coordinated sequence of contractions and relaxations of the heart muscle, causing blood to move from the atria to the ventricles, into the arteries and to the organs of the body. The movement of blood through each compartment depends on changes in volume and pressure induced by the muscle contraction of the heart walls. Systole is the part of the cardiac cycle during which the chambers of the heart contract while refilling with blood. Diastole is the phase of the cardiac cycle when the heart muscle is relaxed and the chambers are filling with blood. The cardiac cycle consists of three stages. 1. Atrial systole. The atria contract while ventricles relax. As the atria fill with blood, the volume pressure increases, forcing the atrioventricular valves open, pushing the blood into the ventricles. 2. Ventricular systole. The ventricles contract while the atria relaxes. The volume and pressure of blood in the ventricles increases, causing the atrioventricular valves to close. The force of the contraction pushes blood through the semilunar valves into the arteries. 3. Diastole. Both the atria and ventricles are relaxed as the atria fills with blood, the pressure is low in both chambers. The high pressure in the arteries compared to the pressure within the ventricles forces the semilunar valves to close, preventing blood flowing back into the ventricles. The heart is a myogenic muscle. This means it can contract of its own accord and maintain rhythm without requiring an external stimulus. The sinoatrial node, or SAN, is a nodule group of cells in the wall of the right atrium and is the pacemaker of the heart. These cells spontaneously produce an electrical impulse or action potential which travels through the heart walls through an electrical conduction system which causes it to contract. The SAN generates regular waves of action potential which causes a synchronised contraction of the atrial walls. A band of non-conducting tissues formed by the valves lies between the atria and ventricles, which prevents the potential spreading from atria to ventricles. The signal is then relayed to the atrioventricular node, or AVN, which is situated in the lower portion of the right atrium, near the heart septum. The AVN passes the electrical wave through the centre of the heart through the muscular fibres called the bundle of his. There is a delay in this relay to ensure the atria empty with blood. The bundle of his passes the electrical wave to the perkine fibres located at the bottom of the heart and within the ventricle walls. This causes a synchronised contraction from the bottom up of the ventricles, forcing blood into the arteries to be taken away from the heart. Hemoglobin and oxygen transport. The circulatory system in mammals is crucial for the transport of blood all around the body. As we have covered, this process is key for providing tissues and organs with oxygen and nutrients in order to survive. One key component of red blood cells is hemoglobin, which is crucial for carrying oxygen around the body. 
Hemoglobin is a globular protein in its quaternary structure. Hemoglobin is composed of four polypeptide subunits, two alpha chains and two beta pleated sheets. Each subunit contains a cofactor known as a heme group. The heme group is composed of protoporphyrin 9 and ferrous iron. The ferrous iron is crucial for the oxygen binding function of the heme group. Therefore, hemoglobin can bond with four molecules of oxygen. The heme groups have a high affinity for oxygen and combine reversibly to either absorb or release oxygen. The binding of oxygen to heme groups is described as cooperative binding. As one molecule of oxygen binds to one heme group, the affinity for oxygen increases for the other heme groups due to conformational change in the 3D structure of hemoglobin. This allows for easier binding. Hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen depends on the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. For example, in the lungs, the partial pressure of oxygen is high. This increases the affinity for oxygen in hemoglobin and hence the oxygen is more readily bound. In the tissue fluid, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher. This decreases the affinity for oxygen and oxygen molecules are released into the tissues. Carbon dioxide is carried to the lungs in the form of bicarbonate ions. 5% is dissolved in blood plasma. 10 to 20% combines with amine groups in the hemoglobin's polypeptide chains forming carbamino hemoglobin. 75 to 80% forms hydrocarbonate ions in the cytoplasm of the red blood cells. The equation for this is carbon dioxide plus water, reversibly carbonic acid to hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Our body's red blood cell count increases at high altitudes. Approximately 2,100 meters above sea level, the oxygen level in blood decreases rapidly. More red blood cells are required to supply oxygen to muscles and vital organs. Therefore, circulating blood around the body is crucial for gas exchange, removal of waste substances from tissues and providing tissues with nutrients and oxygen required for survival. This concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope it helped with your revision on mammalian transport. I hope to see you next week for the fourth video in the series focusing on gas exchange systems and the effect of smoking.